Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the earnings conference call of Dalmia Bharat Limited for the quarter and half year ended 30th September 2024. Please note that this conference call will be for 60 minutes and for the duration of this conference call, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. This conference call is being recorded and the transcript may be put on the website of the company. After the management discussion, there is an opportunity for you to ask questions. Should anyone need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone phone. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. Before I hand over the conference to the management, I would like to remind you that certain statements made during the course of this call may not be based on historical information or facts and may be forward-looking statements. These statements are based on expectations and projections and may involve a number of risks and uncertainties such that the actual outcome may differ materially from those suggested by such statements. On the call, we have with us Mr. Puneet Dalmia, Managing Director and CEO, Dalmia Bharat Limited, Mr. Dharmendra Tuteja, CFO, and Mr. Rajiv Bansal, President and Chief Transformation Officer, and the other management of the company. I would now like to hand the conference call over to Ms. Aditi Mittal, Head of Investor Relations. Please go ahead. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Dharma Bharat's earnings call, uh, quarter two and H1 FY25. We declare our results on Saturday, and the presentation and the results have all been uploaded on our new website and can be downloaded from there. With this, I will now hand over the call to Mr. Dharmia for his opening remarks. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, let me begin with an overview of the quarter, and then Dharminder will take you to our operational and financial metrics. India remains the fastest growing economy in the world, and I'm confident that as India grows, cement sector being a proxy will continue to flourish. While the industry's long-term prospects are promising, there have been some short-term blips as the demand in the first half of this fiscal 25 has been quite muted and below our own internal estimation. While H1 growth in, in the cement sector is expected to be around 2 to 3% based on analyst estimates, I believe that H2 will see a good bounce back and could grow around 8% YOY with a full year growth around 6%. The reasons for the same in my view are as follows. Infrastructure spending of the government is only at 27% of the budgeted allocation till August 2024. This percentage in FY24 was at 39% for the first five months. There is no reason to believe that the government will not spend the budgeted amount given the robust collections. This would mean almost double the monthly run rate of infrastructure spending by the government as compared to the first five months. The pent up demand because of slower than expected demand in H1 for reasons already discussed earlier are also likely to add to the demand growth being better in H2. The real estate cycle is on a multi-year upswing and we expect a strong pickup in the construction activity in H2. Private CapEx has also started to gain momentum and is expected to pick up further. I continue to believe that the larger players would outperform the other players in terms of growth as we have seen in the last many years. This will only accelerate further given that there is consolidation in the sector. We at Dalmia have laid a strong foundation to grow volumes by at least one and a half times of the sector. Since the industry witnessed a weak demand environment in the first half of the year, it led to an, a decline in the overall industry utilization, which was already running at 67% in FY24. As, as a result of this, the industry saw a weak pricing environment and saw prices come down. I believe that with the expectation of a strong demand revival in H2, prices should start moving up from here on, though the competitive intensity may not allow much gains on this front. 
on the cost side we continue to be one of the lowest cost producers in the sector coming to the quarterly performance of our company during q2 of fy25 i believe we have delivered a healthy volume growth of 8.4% yoy in spite of the discontinuation of the jp tolling arrangement on the capacity side we are currently at 46.6 million tons and on track to reach 49.5 million tons by the end of financial year 25 <clears throat> our 2.4 million tons of northeast and 0.5 million tons of bihar expansion should get commissioned in next with regards to our future expansion of reaching 75 million tons by fy28 i committed in the last earnings call that we will detail out the plan in the next 12 months we are actively working on several plans and would announce that within the next 9 months i will now request zarmender to take you through the detailed financial performance of the quarter gone by thank you thank you punit ji good morning everyone let me take you through the key aspects of our performance as punit ji has mentioned our volume grew by 8.4% yoy to 6.7 million ton during the quarter however revenues have declined by 2% yoy to rupees 3087 crores due to a sharp decline in cement prices our overall trade mix stood at about 63% during the quarter the cement prices declined during q2 due to weak demand scenario particularly in south and eastern markets these markets saw decline of 5 to 7% qoq and about 10 to 12% on yoy basis decrease trade mix also contributed to fall in nsr as punit ji said we expect these prices to improve in s2 with rebound of demand though the competitive intensity may cap any significant gains on this account moving on to the cost items our raw material cost during q2 increased marginally by 0.4% to rupees 789 per ton of cement production on a yoy basis as we have discontinued the cement hauling operations at jp our overall cost now doesn't include any cost of purchase material the power and fuel cost declined 11.3% yoy to rupees 1012 per ton of cement production mainly due to a 20, 26 decline in the fuel consumption cost to about 101 dollar on a yoy basis on a qoq basis it declined by about 5 dollar per ton fuel cost during the quarter stood at rupees 1.36 per kcal our share of renewable energy has also improved to 39% during the quarter we are working to get additional cost saving of rupees 150 to 200 per ton from our different initiatives in line with this we continue to put renewable power capacities across our various locations we have commissioned 16 megawatt captive solar power plant at satur taking our total re capacity to 202 megawatt as we speak some smaller captive re capacities are also under execution besides this we have entered into multiple renewable power agreements under the group captive arrangement which will secure about 151 megawatt capacity of renewable power through solar and wind energy this is in addition to 127 megawatt capacity signed earlier and as already mentioned in our q1 earnings call in total we have signed 278 megawatt of long term renewable power agreements under the group captive arrangement so far the commissioning of these renewable power plants is expected to begin from next quarter onwards and by end of fy25 we should have operational re capacity of 341 megawatt including 120 megawatt from group captive arrangements with this we expect to exit fy25 with about 45% re power share in our overall power mix on consumption basis during the quarter our logistic cost increased by about 7.6% yoy to rupees 1102 per ton since we started servicing central markets from our eastern plants 
the quarter also had only one month of busy season surcharge waiver as against two months in same quarter last year. The employee cost during the quarter declined by 3% YOY, 2 rupees 219 crores. However, other, exp other expenses rose 15.7% YOY, 2 rupees 546 crores, primarily due to higher number of shutdowns of plants and increase in packing and material handling costs linked to the increase in sales volume. Our better during the quarter declined by 27% YOY, 2 rupees 434 crores, which works out to rupees 650 on per ton basis. We accrued rupees 61 crore of incentive during the quarter, while our collection during the quarter was rupees 20 crores. However, in early October, we have received incentive about rupees 46 crores. Our incentive outstanding on 30th September was rupees 779 crores. For FY25, we expect total incentive accruals and collections of rupees 300 crores. The depreciation during the quarter declined by rupees 65 crores to rupees 336 crores on a YOF basis, as previous year had additional depreciation of rupees 40 crores pertaining to certain components of plant and equipment, which were replaced as part of our overall depot linking projects. The FY25 depreciation is expected to be in the range of rupees 1300 to 1350 crores. Our capex during H1 stood at about rupees 1386 crores. During the full year, we expect to spend about 3000 to 3300 crores, which is largely towards capacity expansion including land for future projects and certain cost reduction projects including renewable energy and coal blocks. During the quarter, we have received final tranche of rupees 320 crores along with interest from the divestment of DBRL shares. As of 30th September, our growth and net debt marginally increased to rupees 4,784 crores and rupees 644 crores respectively. Hence, our net debt to EBITDA stood at 0.25 times. We believe that our strong balance sheet positions as well for the next phase of expansion. Lastly, the board has declared an interim dividend of rupees 4 per share. With this, I would now like to open the floor for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now be conducting a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. A confirmation tone will indicate your line is in the question queue. You may press star and two if you'd like to remove your question from the queue. For participants using speaker equipment, it may be necessary to pick up your handset before pressing the star keys. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while we poll for questions. Our first question comes from the line of Shravan Shah from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, uh, in the opening remarks, uh, we have said that the, in the second half, we are looking at 8% uh, uh, volume growth for industry. Uh, just trying to understand for us in the 1H, uh, we have done close to 7.2, but uh, for us, how we look at the second half in terms of the volume growth, because if we now remove the JP volume, which was there in last year in the second half, uh, is it fair to say that uh, we will be uh, just doing a one or two percent kind of a growth in the second half? So net net for FR25, we will be having a close to three and a half to four percent max kind of a volume growth. We've already said that um, you know we have laid a strong foundation to grow at one and a half times the industry growth. And I think we stick to that guy. Okay. And uh, in terms of the pricing, sir, so currently uh, the, 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 the prices, uh, if one looks at versus the Q2 average, uh, how much uh, they are out? Yeah, the month to date, October uh, prices are of the same lines as the Q2 average. Okay, okay. 
and on the on the capex front uh, so particularly the capacity sir just trying to understand that uh, we are uh, sticking to 75 million ton by for 28 uh, so additionally close to 25 million ton so roughly if somebody looks at in terms of broadly uh, even if uh, 60 70 dollar then also 14 15000 crore kind of a capex so uh, if you can help us uh, uh, so from fy25 you have already mentioned uh, 26 27 28 also we will most likely to see the similar kind of a capex uh, 3500 and ultimately that will keep on increasing our uh, uh, so is it a fair understanding uh, If we are planning that uh, our net debt or beta should not cross two is to one, as we detail out the plan for the 75 million capacity location by location, uh, will also give clear guidance on the debt levels. But I don't think uh, that should be concerned, as we have articulated our capital allocation policy that we will try to keep our net debt or beta uh, up to two is to one only. Uh, just last uh, data point, if you can share a uh, premium share blending ratio. Uh, Uh, CC ratio, uh, railroad mix, and lead distance for Q2. Okay, our CC ratio is uh, uh, for this quarter 1.64. Okay. The blended uh, uh, cement sale is 82.7 percent. The lead distance uh, this quarter is 280 because we increased uh, supplies from eastern plants to uh, central region and uh, rail. Uh, road, this is 15% rail and uh, 85% road. Uh, uh, and the premium, sir? Yeah, premium is uh, 22.4%. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Or uh, the next question is from the line of Amit Morak from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, good morning. Thanks for the opportunity. So, uh, my first question is on KPEX. So, I believe you have cut down your KPEX guidance from about thirty-five hundred to four thousand earlier to three thousand to three hundred now. And in the one H, uh, you spent even lower than that hundred. Now, uh, my understanding is that on uh, northeast, the guided KPEX is about thirty-six hundred crores with commissioning of Q4 FY twenty-five. So, are we running behind schedule on the northeast project? In, and uh, could you just refresh the timeline of both grinding and plinker commissioning in northeast? So, plinker, uh, as we said, will come in the uh, FY26. We expect it around uh, September of uh, uh, next year. And the grinding is also will be coming in this uh, uh, current financial year in S2, most likely around December or January. How much is already spent on the project? So out of the current year, um, as I said, about 70% is towards this. So close to about uh, uh, 1,000 crore is already spent uh, on the grinding side and grinding as well as this uh, in the current year. And nothing spent on clinker yet, is it? The clinker is also in process. So both combined, I'm saying that last year also we had spent something, and the current year is about 1,000. So it is on track and in line with what uh, we had planned. Okay. And um, on on the expansion side, like uh, the debottling projects uh, of 0.9 million ton on Clinker, I think are still pending. I believe so it was expected or guided that by Q2, I think the yeast will come in. So uh, by when now can we expect that to come in uh, by Q4 or something like that? Yeah, that is planned in S2. Work is already in process. Sure. Lastly, I'm just in the central. Uh, uh, region while the tolling is over, so I believe you've gained certain footprint already. So will you continue to service that market uh, with uh, the DDAD network you built, or what's the plan there? Yes, we'll continue to serve this market uh, because the, whatever network has been created, that uh, we like to maintain. And ultimately, in the medium term, uh, we should have our own capacity, even if uh, JPE plants are not there. How much would be sold in that region right now? The regional data we are not sharing, so please bear with us. Got it. And there was no tolling of JP, right? Zero tolling uh, in in Q2. In this quarter, yes. Sure. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sumangal Nivatia 
with Court of Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, yeah, good morning. Uh, sorry, I got disconnected, so I'm not sure if this is uh, already asked. So I just want to know what was the fuel cost in rupees per cal and what is the guidance uh, given uh, uh, Petco coal prices are on a declining trend. How much of further reduction are we expecting in the coming quarters? So, so Mangal, uh, this quarter we had a consumption of uh, about $101 per ton and the purchase is also on the same levels. And as we speak, the spot levels are slightly down, closer to about $93. So we may expect uh, marginal reduction in the coming quarter. And uh, uh, blended fuel cost uh, worked out to 1.36 per kcal. Understood, understood. And on the overall renewable uh, power mix, uh, I read we reached 39%. Is it possible to share what, what sort of expectation do we have for uh, uh, say FY26, 27 individually and what sort of cost saving should we build in given the higher share of renewable? I think currently we are at 9% by year and we expect it to reach uh, closer to about 45% and uh, next year and we should be about 50% or so and uh, uh, for 152, 200 rupees uh, uh, savings which we are targeting uh, from various cost initiatives so that uh, targets about uh, uh, what savings from the VC as well as the logistic and VC savings primarily come from uh, renewable power as well as um, uh, coal blocks. So we can expect about 50 rupees per ton savings in the current year, another 50 rupees savings in the FI26, and another 100 rupees or so in FI27 by when all the coal blocks will be operational. Understood. Understood. That's very clear. Thank you and all the best. Thank you, Sumantra. Thank, Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ritesh Shah with Investec. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So a couple of questions. Uh, first is, in the initial remarks, uh, you indicated that we expect pricing to inch up in the second half, subject to competitive intensity. Uh, the question is, uh, what is our strategy to combat, to combat competitive intensity? Basically, it's uh, aligning the, our goals with the goals of the dealers. So it's all about relationship management with the dealers. Market continues to remain dynamic and uh, competitive. So our response time to the market uh, uh, dynamics will be very fast so that uh, we continue to do this. And also we'll be continuing to increase our share in the uh, demand segment as well as uh, when we start pricing the uh, products to the customers, we'll ensure that uh, it takes into account the final nuances of the user mix as well as the incentive strategies. I think I have uh, sure, sir, just a yeah, this sure. this I think uh, long term we want to maintain our cost leadership. We want to invest in our brand. Uh, we want to, you know, deepen our distribution and we want to improve our service. So I think there will be, uh, these things will be the uh, a continuous journey throughout, no matter what happens, because it will just improve the, you know, uh, our ability to service our customers and add value to their businesses. So I would just say that, you know, uh, there will be times when industry prioritizes, uh, you know, market share over margins. And there will be times when industry will prioritize margins over market share. This happens in every industry. Our industry is no exception. And I think, uh, you know, this is the time to, uh, you know, improve our efficiencies and, you know, just stay very, very focused on execution and improve our, invest in brand and distribution. So I think that's just going to be our strategy market by market and just, you know, continue to execute, to put our heads down and continue to execute, you know, well, that's it. Uh, so thanks for the answer. Uh, just a related one. Uh, you indicated uh, we will align ourselves with the dealers. I think it's probably visible given uh, the discount increase that we have seen in FY24 annual report or FY23. It's, it's a pretty steep bump, almost 11%. And uh, it stacks up in line uh, with the highest in the industry. And if I look at the same variable, it's like 13% CAGR over the last five years. Uh, so, so when we say uh, basically focus will be on cost, uh, how should we look at 
uh, incentives and discounts because this number has been ballooning, ballooning up very, very sharply impacting profitability. So are we saying that uh, we will scout for market share in the interim if it means uh, staying, playing along with the dealers to ensure that we maintain our market foothold? I think this strategy will be different market by market. Um, and I think, uh, you know, there are markets where, uh, our, you know, cost is cost of service very low and our market share is, uh, uh, you know, not very high. So I think in those markets, we will prioritize a gain of market share. There are markets where, uh, you know, uh, we we serve, but in in the long term, uh, you know, we may not be that competitive, but, you know, in the short term, we may be serving those markets. So in, in those markets, we may, you know, just look at optimizing prices a little bit more uh, rather than just go all out for market share. Uh, so I think there will be a strategy which will be different market by market, micro market by micro market. And I think uh, we are looking at uh, what's the best uh, uh, way to, you know, balance volume gains, you know, while preserving our margins. Sure, that's useful. And uh, if I just take one more, uh, sir, you have indicated 150 to 200 rupees per ton. Uh, I think in Sumangal's question, you did uh, dissect it broadly for renewable coal and logistics. Uh, is it possible to give uh, exact numbers over here? So logistics will be about uh, 50 rupees and balance <clears throat> uh, uh, 100 rupees, uh, 100 to 150 rupees will come from coal blocks as well as uh, renewable. Sure. This is very helpful. Thank you so much. All the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Satyadeep Jain with Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Hi. Thank you. Um, just uh, uh, first question would be on the uh, medium term growth. You outlined 75 million tons by 28. Just wanted to see, you're going to announce the uh, expansions in nine months. In nine months, can we assume that uh, the entire land acquisition approvals all will be taken care of? Uh, so it's just ordering. Uh, how are you thinking of de-risking from here to ordering in the nine, next nine months? I think uh, I told on the last earnings call also, uh, we are in the process of getting permissions and buying land. And, uh, you know, this is a you know parallel process. Work is going on. And, um, you know, uh, we will we will detail out the plan site by site, location by location, along with timelines uh, within the next nine months. So the work is on. I think that's the best way to de-risk it, get permits, buy land, and make sure that we prioritize prioritize our sites based on strategic attractiveness and you know long term IRR. Okay. Just uh, second question on the central. Uh, strategy, are uh, you catering to this market, I believe, all the way from Odisha. Are there any particular uh, pockets um, uh, that you're catering to? And the strategy would be to continue to incur marketing expense, um, uh, look at building out the entire network there for the next two, three years till you set up uh, your own plant there. Is that fair to assume? And these, these markets have been catered to um, all the way from Odisha right now. Yes, I think it's fair to assume that. Dharmendra, do you want to add to it? Add to it? Yeah, um, uh, earlier we had a uh, um, network uh, in UP primarily, closer to Allahabad as well as uh, Varanasi. So those markets are continuing to be served. And of course, the expenditure of the uh, marketing, brand building, etc., is in line with the uh, volume of uh, sales which we are incurring there, so that uh, uh, it is in, the costs are in line with the revenue being done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Power Spetia with Aditya Birla Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, hey, sir. Just wanted to understand how sacrosanct is the 75 million ton number for you, and what will make you change this uh, postponement postponement of giving the utilization still remain for 70 percent for the entire fund. I think I've, uh, you know, already shared that, uh, you know, uh, we think that we we are going to build 100 million tons by financial year 31. Our medium-term plan is to build 75 million tons by financial year 28. Um, 
and if let us say there is some massive blip in the industry either upside or downside we will always review our actual you know plan and pace it along with you know how we see the industry shaping up so you know these plans are more or less firm but i think if there is a you know massive shock macro micro shock we'll have to adjust to those shocks and pace the plan accordingly sure and secondly on this 3000 crore plus capex number for this year should the similar trend continue in fy 2627 and beyond there will be no announced expansion plans uh, the next year capex should be about 2500 or so and uh, of course when we announce the next line of uh, growth capex then we have more visibility about next two years uh, capex guidelines so if we have to strip out the maintenance part now what will be that number hmm. it's close to about 250 to 300 crores per annum sure thanks for that so much thank you the next question is from the line of pratik kumar with jeffries please go ahead hello yeah good morning sir my first question is on uh, the pricing so uh reported like around 5 5.5% 5 drop in pricing quarter on quarter uh, uh do you think is this worse than industry in your markets or like is it in line because as because your volume growth is faster uh, than industry probably so had the higher volumes come at the expense of much worse pricing i think it's hard for us to say uh, let me let me just handle this and you can add to sure. it i think it's hard for us to say uh, because uh, Uh, you know I, there are there are areas where we have repositioned our brand uh, and we we are uh, able to charge a higher price uh, but this quarter our non trade mix has gone up uh, which uh, typically sells at a lower price than the b2c business uh, you know so there there is a definite impact uh, because of volume uh, because of the segment mix um, but overall i think uh, you know in many markets we have been able to reposition the brand and uh get a slightly higher price than what we were getting earlier in the trade segment sir mr please you want to add to yeah our reading was that uh, our decline is in line with the market uh, decline of prices uh, even south and eastern markets have shown much bigger declines that has translated into our overall nsr decline Uh, okay uh, related uh, on question on non trade mix on higher uh, so in a market environment where generally the government demand has gone down we are trying to increase the market share in non trade segment that is also probably weighing on prices that be right the quarter to quarter it may have some changes but uh, we continue to remain focused on increasing our trade mix and uh, gradually of course you will see that retraction rebuilding okay and one other question regarding uh, if you like in a one of the remarks earlier you said about the uh, market share over margins uh, quarter to quarter or year to year uh, so i mean we have historic a uh, few quarters back we talked about EBITDA margin of around 1100 to 1200 we are currently at 650 uh, in this quarter what are the kind of margins at least on near term when we talk about this market share versus margin so this year what kind of margin we might be looking at i quarter to quarter it's very hard to predict but if you look at h1 it's somewhere in the region of 750 to 800 and uh, i personally believe that prices should move up a little bit gradually um you know so i would think that uh, you know maybe this is a speed scannable Sorry, your voice was not audible. What uh, should be sustainable? I'm saying, I'm saying that uh, you know, if you look at H1 numbers, H1 um, EBITDA per ton, uh, you know, is somewhere around seven eighty two. See what? How much is it? Does it look exact? Seven eighty two. It's seven eighty two. Um, so quarter to quarter numbers could be volatile, but uh, you know, we think the prices may be slightly better in H2. and i think uh, 900 to 1000 rupees uh, you know at least this year should be sustainable and um, again it depends on you know how the demand also behaves um, so we think that uh, in the long term the guidance that we've given of 1100 to 1200 should should be doable unless there are some really macro shocks then you know there is uh, 
you know, uh, like uh, very intense uh, competition for market share. Uh, sure, sir. I'll get back to the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rashi Chopra from Citigroup. Please go ahead. Thank you. Just for a statement from Pompey as your question. I'm much sorry, much Rashi, there is too much of background noise on your end. Uh, this is better. Please go ahead. So I'm just taking on from some of the earlier questions. So what was the industry volume growth for this, this quarter, not the half, just in the second quarter? I think industry, the numbers have not been reported, but we think it will be low single digit. Okay. And, uh, you know, quarter was 2.3%. Yes. Okay, so similar. Well, I don't know. I mean, so single digit is what we think. All right. And you've managed to obviously grow at 8%, and you've also kind of indicated that your realizations, you know, given the regions, should be similar to the rest of the peer group. So what is, and I would imagine that this will be one of the stronger growth rates, uh, you know, within the industry, at least for this quarter. So if it was not for pricing, you know, what has been different for you? Sorry, can you just repeat that question, please? So I think you mentioned that the price decline in the South and the East is 5 to 7 percent, which is in line with the general peer group that everyone in the South and the East should have seen similar price declines. And the industry growth is so muted. What have you done differently if not for take, you know, if not for kind of reducing prices further? Yeah, as, as I said, uh, yeah, as I said, in many markets we have repositioned our brand and uh, we are able to charge higher prices. Um, you know, we are also focused on improving our premium mix. Um, it, it will be a journey, uh, and again, market by market, we are reviewing our strategy. Um, and um, I think we are also looking at, uh, you know, uh, which are the best markets that, uh, you know, we should serve and just increase our share in those markets. These are the three things that we are, you know, looking at market by market. Okay. And you also mentioned that, you know, Dalmia will grow at one and a half times the industry. So this year, so you are confident of getting to a 9% volume growth for the year. Yeah. Given the 6% um, growth. Okay, and just one last question. The EBITDA per ton, like you said, quarter to quarter is hard to get. Uh, but you mentioned that, you know, this year 1,000 should not be, you know, 1,000 should be doable. Was that for the second half or was that for the average for the year? Well, I'm saying the first half is 780. Um, you know, so we expect prices to move up a little bit in H2 compared to H1. So, you know, the blended number should be probably in the range of, uh, you know, 900 to 1,000 is what I think. But... Uh, it depends on you know how demand behaves and um, you know what is the competitive intensity in the market. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pulkit Patani with Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Just one question in terms of the Central India expansion, uh, whatever we had invested, now that the tolling uh, arrangement is off, uh, is there any possible write-offs that we may have to take in future or because we are trying to expand that organically, we don't think there should be any need for us to make any of those adjustments to our books? See, last quarter we have done some impairment of uh, exposure which we had on JP, uh, that is, I think, about 113 crores. So we had taken the full impact which we thought could have arisen. So I don't think anything further should come. In terms of the manpower we hired there, et cetera, et cetera, so they'll all be used organically for us to go in that region. Is that the right answer? Right. That is right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Indrajit Agarwal with CLSA. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the chance. Sir, uh, at 49 odd million tons, even if we grow one and a half times industry, by FY26, we will have closer to 66-67% utilization. So do we think the focus should be to get the utilization up first before focusing on the next leg of CAPEX? Because the industry anyway, we can still grow and a half times industry with the current capacity at least for the next three, four years or so. 
And secondly, on that vein, uh, would we be losing a reasonably high amount of money in central region right now? I mean, pro broadly, what proportion of your volumes would have been central in this quarter? So I think, uh, you know, there are markets in which uh, our capacity is almost sold out, and I think we'll have to add new capacity. Um, there is also a lead time in adding capacity, and, um, you know, it could take around, uh, you know, uh, two years plus. Um, and uh, finally, I also think that, uh, you know, there will be, we have an ambition of being a pan-India player, so we might add capacity in new regions where we don't exist today. So I think this decision will be taken in, uh, you know, keeping in mind where our utilizations are higher and, you know, our uh, ambition uh, to be a pan-India player. Um, and I think secondly, on in terms of... Um, you know, regional volumes and how much we are selling in which market and what's the profitability, please bear with us, Love we don't share that data. Sure, makes sense. Uh, so lastly, uh, given the current level of uh, expansion gets over, let's say by mid FI26, uh, would we have sufficient clinker if we want to operate the entire 49 million ten at 100% utilization? Yes, we do, and we'll have to increase our CC ratio in some markets, which we are already doing. Sure. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Gupta from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Hi. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, so Daljia, sir, I have just one medium-term industry question for you. Uh, you have talked about uh, industry prices being weak, not just now, but for some time now. Uh, if industry prices don't move up steadily given competitive intensity, does that risk capacity expansion for the industry? Or do you think that capacity expansion could come, but at the expense of uh, ROICs? Any views over here? Look, I think uh, at current prices, uh, you know, no investments can be justified. And, um, you know, whether you look at organic or inorganic growth, uh, if you believe that the prices are going to remain at this level, we can't justify any investment. I think we all believe that structurally the industry is uh, – you know, a very positive in a, you know, uh, in a medium to long term, and which we have outlined, like, we believe that India will grow, and if India grows, construction will grow, and there will be, you know, demand for cement. Um, and I think uh, the, the demand supply equation, there are, while there are short term headwinds, I think long term demand should grow at a higher CAGR than the, you know, capacity CAGR. So we think that demand could grow in the range of 7 to 8 percent, uh, in the long term, and capacity probably will grow at 5 to 6 percent. Uh, so, therefore, there will be a slight uptick in capacity utilization over the longer term. We also think that the top players are expanding faster than the smaller players, and there is increased m in the sector. So, the share of top four will go to 60 percent by financial year 27. And I think uh, just with increasing consolidation and, uh, you know, a uh, very good long-term demand supply scenario. I think the entry barriers are rising in this business, so we can expect better pricing. Uh, but, you know, it's very hard to predict what will happen in the short term. And we've even seen, if we look at our last 10 years, 20 years of history, there has been, you know, it's a cyclical business and prices are very volatile. But if you take a five to seven year view, it all evens out. And, um, you know, this business requires patience. Uh, this business requires not being disappointed when chips are down and not being too exuberant or arrogant when you are making too much money. So I think you have to keep balance and you have to keep the conviction. Uh, at least that's what we've been benefited from in the past. And we think that the structural positives in the sector are far better than what they were 10 years ago. So we believe that it's a very attractive time for the industry. And I think without uh, stretching the balance sheet, uh, you know, uh, 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 no, uh, uh, expansion is the right way to go while keeping, while using this opportunity to tighten your belts and become more efficient, while not losing sight of long-term investments in brand building and distribution. Uh, thanks so much. So, uh, just just uh, uh, just to understand this better. So, at what uh, uh, capacity utilization levels do you think that uh, pricing power comes back materially, or how should we look at at what prices uh, it makes sense for the industry to add capacity, not thinking about uh, near-term headwinds, or we should just forget about near-term he headwinds and think about medium-term and long-term uh, uh, outlook for the industry, and not think about ROICs in the near term. 
I think, uh, you know, you can do the math yourself if, like, uh, you know, uh, the capacity creation cost, um, you know, uh, an m &A cost is in the range of, let's say, 90 to $120 per ton. Uh, let's say an average of $100. Uh, I think uh, the EBITDA has to be in the range of, you know, in my view, 1500 rupees per ton in the long term. Got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Naveen Sahadev with ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question was, uh, in the earlier comments, you said there was an increase in the non-trade share in the quarters. Uh, so could you just uh, uh, give details as to how much was the sequential improvement, I mean increase, in, in non-trade over previous quarter? Yeah, previous quarter we had 64% and this quarter we have 63%. So there's a uh, trade has uh, gone down by 1% and non trade has gone up by 1%. On a YY basis, uh, this is about 5% because last year we had 68% uh, trade mix, now which is 63%. So on a YY basis, 5% increase. On a QOQ basis, 1% increase in the non trade portion. Sure. The reason why I'm, uh, uh, I'm asking this is because. Uh, in the second half, if the government demand is expected to come back, uh, which is where the infrastructure-led demand will bounce and lead to overall industry volume growth, is it fair to assume that this shift or tilt in favor of non-trade can only uh, go up for your and in the same breath, is there a possibility or a rethink on our uh, uh, plan to venture into the OPC market of non-trade? If I'm not wrong, uh, we are not selling, the, I mean, in the East, I think we hardly sell in the OPC market uh, at all, and maybe in the South, overall blending being at uh, around 87% uh, odd. So is there a, a expectation that non-trade will go up and our share of OPC uh, will rise? Thanks. So I think in the, in the short term, it's hard to predict. We are running at low capacity utilization right now. And we will see whatever, you know, is best done to, uh, you know, maximize our contribution. Uh, but I think in the long term, we are more committed to blended cements. And um, I think, uh, you know, we are more committed to increasing our share of trade. Understood. Uh, helpful. Uh, my second and last question is on the CAPEX. So when you're looking, I mean, you're giving a target of uh, 75 by 28. So roughly 25 million tons is what uh, we are likely to add with the current uh, expansion which are on hand from 50 to uh, uh, 75. So is it fair to assume that from 26 to 28, I mean in, in, in three years, the CAPEX, because it's, I'm assuming it will be a mix of greenfield and uh, brownfield. So our CAPEX over these three years could be around 18 to 20,000 crore. Is that the way uh, to look at it? I think we don't want to give any numbers right now. We are still working on exact plans in which market, how much, and what capacity. So I think uh, you'll have to wait, um, you know, till we announce the plans. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor & Company. Please go ahead. Saket, your line is unmuted. If you can unmute from your end as well. Thank you. Yeah, Namaskar, Dalmeji, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, firstly, sir, for the EBITDA quarter number, you mentioned the number of 650 also. 650 is for the second quarter, or uh, if you could just correct me there. 782 is for the H1. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Q2 is uh, 650. Okay, and the blend is uh, average is 782, so that was significantly higher for the first quarter. Yeah, that's right. First quarter okay. was 900. Okay. Uh, sir, when we look at our other expenses line item, that has been uh, steadily, uh, steady up for this quarter also. So can you explain the nature of uh, this other expense line item of 546 crore? So this has gone up uh, from the last year or maybe from year to year also uh, because of the higher number of shutdowns of the plants. So the repair cost uh, 
or uh, contractor costs, etc., comes in this line. And when I see last year on year, then since the volume has gone up, so there are some volume linked costs like packing, packing bags cost, uh, commissions, etc. So those, these costs also go up accordingly. Okay. So can you quantify the one of line item for the repair part uh, that was included for this quarter? So that will be about 40, 50 crores. So. But there could be uh, shutdowns in Q3 also, but bulk comes in Q2, mm -hmm. and then Q3 is the next one, and Q4 factory comes down very significantly. Uh, right. And so utilization levels sir, for, uh, for, uh, for the uh, entire entity was in the, in six, about 65% for the first half? And and for the industry. Yes, sir. And for the industry also, what was the number? And uh, taking into account the anticipated capex uh, spent from the government for H2, what should be likely ending uh, the H2 in terms of capacity utilization level? Okay. Uh, for this year, uh, for this quarter, we had a capacity utilization of 58%, but uh, we expect it to go up in the coming quarters because this was a seasonally weak quarter. Right. Industry is also, I think, currently about 67% or so. 67% is for the industry. Uh, 67 or so. Uh, come again, sir. 57, 57. Oh, six, 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 seven. Six, seven, six, seven. Uh, sir, taking into account our uh, the, the capex that we envisage and also uh, uh, the uh, other aspect of the weak market, uh, it is always good that you share your uh, the profit with your investors. But coming about uh, coming out with different payout at this point of juncture, when uh, we are having strained cash flow, so can you please explain uh, what what uh, what's the thought process to to the, uh, to bunch, I mean, to return cash right now when that could be for a much better use than uh, returning that to your investor? For the full year, we don't think that uh, the outlook has diminished. Uh, uh, that is why we have not changed the trajectory of the dividend payouts. Still hope that uh, uh, the growth trajectory of the volume as well as profitability should continue. And accordingly, we have not uh, downgraded the payout of the dividend. Our capital allocation policy says that we will, uh, you know, up to 10% of our free cash flow, we will distribute as dividends. And I think we are, uh, you know, uh, it's in line with our capital allocation policy, which we have already outlined. Okay. And lastly, sir, on the waste heat recovery and the alternate fuel part, uh, what is our current fuel mix and going ahead for, uh, say, one, one to two year timeline, how will this uh, number shape up for waste heat recovery that is, uh, and the use of alternate uh, fuel? I think we don't share that data, uh, you know, granularly, but we've given you our RE power mix and we've also shared, uh, you know, our overall fuel cost. Right. So on the RE power, I said that uh, we are currently at 39% by year and we expect to go to about 45% and by next year and by about 50%. Right, right. And lastly, sir, on the 113 exceptional line item part, can you explain the nature sir, and any more uh, uh, amount that we need to uh, classify under exceptional going ahead? If you can explain the JP, the JP issue uh, in a bit detail. Since we had done the tolling operations in the last one and a half years, uh, so we had to give some advances to JP for clearing the past defaults of um, taxes, etc., power payments, etc., without which the plant could not have started. So since we could not recover, that money was to be adjusted in the acquisition of the assets. So since uh, the company has gone into IBC, considering the uncertainty of realization of this amount, we have taken impairment in the last quarter over 113 crores. And that is the full and final figure, no further? Yeah, yeah, we covered whatever exposure we had, so we don't expect any further increase in this. Okay. And lastly, on the Moodly uh, acquisition, uh, yeah, I joined with you. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, definitely. So Moodly, if you could share your thoughts, how have the integration been, and that, that's all from my side. And then, happy the public to the team. Sir. Thank you. Okay. So in Moodly also, we are continuing to uh, improve our positioning in the market and uh, successively we'll ensure that uh, this becomes a very profitable plant and already it has uh, um, crossed the break-even points. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yash Darak with RSPN Ventures. Please go ahead. Uh, so thanks for having me. So my question is that the other expenses uh, has sort of increased at 
total revenue which uh, is generally at 15% so are we expecting this run rate to continue or you know there would be decrease in the other expenses the other expenses has two components one is of course the fixed and second is on the variable part so variable part goes up uh, in line with the volume increase which is the packing cost uh, and some of the cost relating to depot expenses or commission etc etc but the fixed expenses uh, uh, had bump up in the current quarter because of the higher plant shutdowns so this should go down uh, somewhat in q3 and um, mainly in q4 but other fixed expenses uh, should remain same okay thank you and lastly uh, the capex seems to be around 3000 crores with the capex uh, for the entire year so how much capex has it done by now if you could share Yes, close to about 1386 crores in first half, uh, in this quarter rather, in this quarter, and rather, H1 is 1386 crores here. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Muraka from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks for the opportunity again. So. I remember earlier you had mentioned that a uh, thousand dealers of GP had shifted to Dalna in the central markets. So, uh, how many of them would still be associated with you? I think most of them, but uh, exact count, of course, I will not know. But most of them are still continuing when we are current, currently doing the operations through our eastern plants. And are you uh, expanding the network further in central, or planning to maintain uh, the dealer network? of course we have to see the profitability as well as uh, the market growth uh, will try to increase but uh, considering the uh, long distance which we have to cover so we have a limitation of all the markets which we can cover so we'll gradually see how quarter by quarter we are able to improve on it sure got it and also uh, what would be the cost of slag that you are incurring now There is a small increase over the uh, previous quarter. Mm-hmm. Come back on that uh, specific number. Mm-hmm. How much would it be if, uh, if you can get to ballpark also? Like? the range of about uh, 1000 to uh, 1500 rupees it mo- keeps moving from quarter to quarter depending on the uh, option prices okay okay sure yeah thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen we take the last question from the line of shravan shah from dalit capital please go ahead uh thank you sir I uh, so just wanted to understand uh, the eight percent growth that we are looking at for industry in second half, and uh, so for us, uh, we have already said that we are looking at nine percent volume growth for F R twenty five. So uh, broadly, is it fair to say that in the second half uh, for us, uh, South uh, would be growing uh, better than the East? I don't think we can give regional numbers, and I think we have already said that. our estimates for industry growth are better in h2 because h1 q1 was a election quarter and q2 was a monsoon quarter so we think there is pent up demand in housing which could come back we think government spend on infra will gather more momentum we think real estate and private capex will also uh, you know contribute to this so our best estimate is that this can go to 7 to 8% in q2 uh, h2 and um, you know we think that uh, based on this maybe <coughs> uh, prices could be marginally better although it will depend on competitive intensity also so given that we think that uh, you know dagna can continue to grow in the range that uh, we have we have guided for thank you okay and last and last thing sir uh, pet cook share and uh, domestic coal share in the fuel mix in q2 was how much I don't think we will give that data here right now. Okay, no issue, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes our question and answer session. I would now hand the conference over to Mr. Puneet Dalmia for his closing comments. I think this was a you know weak quarter uh, from uh, a pricing standpoint. 
but our volume growth was quite healthy. Uh, you know, we are still very bullish on the long-term prospects of the industry, given the great demand outlook and the consolidation that is happening. Uh, we will continue to build Dalmia to be more efficient. Uh, we will continue to look at our expansion plans in line with our long-term guidance of Pan-India footprint, as well as uh, adding capacity, uh, you know, where we think, uh, you know, we we are sold out and we need we need more market share. Uh, so I would just say that uh, I still have great conviction and great belief in the in the long term story. And cement is a proxy growth for the you know India long term story. Uh, thank you for your interest in us and uh, wish you and your families a very happy Diwali. Look forward to seeing you in uh, 2025. Take care and have a great day. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Dalmia Bharat Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line.